Hey guys, and welcome to View in a Brew with Gaz. Today we'll be working on Sergeant Sitrep, a model that was made by the Sitrep podcast team. It's set in the modern period, carrying all modern equipment and a sniper rifle. And don't forget that cigar. The first colour we'll be using is Citadel Contrast Black Templar. To begin with, I'll start with the boots and work my way up. Once they're done, I carry on to other parts of the equipment. I really like the three magazine chest rig that is on this model. Uh, it has some nice small details. It incorporates well into breaking up the figure's structure. After that, I'll turn my attention to the backpack. By this point, I've already done the shoulder pieces. I thin down slightly with some medium to make these a lighter grey. The sniper rifle I decided to do a matte black. It's one of those things where not really sure if you want to have too much glare on the model, so we'll be doing a toned down version of my normal gun colour scheme. With all that done you can see there is a considerable amount of modern equipment on this miniature. The black really makes it stand out, it gives me a great point of reference to work on the rest of the model, so I think this was a good place to start. Next up we'll be using Citadel Colour Contrast Basilicane in Grey. I wanted to use this on the sort of the webbing part of the chest rig. This would give a slightly different colour but without drawing too much away from the original black scheme. It came out quite well. We'll use Citadel Colour Contrast Leviathan Blue. This is our start point for the trousers. Blue jeans or trousers is one of those things you see quite often on these types of guys when you look at the films and the movies. Sometimes it's military rig, but in this case I wanted to go down the civilian clothing route. I push and pull the contrast around to make sure it gives me a dark spot in the recesses that will come in handy later as a visual reference. After that, we use Citadel Colour Contrast Space Wolves Grey. This has an almost a blue pigment but leaves me a light grey colour. So it works really well with the blacks, greys and the blues that we've just applied to the trousers. Essentially we're hitting up what is the undershirt. It comes out quite close to being the same as the webbing of the chest rig. After that, we'll move on to Citadel Colour Contrast Gullum and Flesh, or Gullum and Flesh, depending on how you say it. This is obviously an easy start point. The only bare skin on this model are the hands, the back of the neck and the face, of which he has a beard, as well as that cigar, so it shouldn't take me to get through this element. I push and pull it around to make sure I've got the darker part of the contrast into the recesses at the edges of the beard and the moustache, as well as in the eye area and around the nose. It gives me a good base to work from. After that, we'll use Citadel Layer Dawn Yellow, the first of the layer paints really. I wanted the beard to be quite a light, bright yellow, uh, a very blonde sort of aspect. With us using so many flat colours, I wanted this to bring your eye up as a focal point to the face. Once painted, you can see how light it really is. For that cigar, we're going to use Citadel Colour Contrast Wildwood. I nearly always call this Wormwood, but thankfully this time I got it right. It takes but a moment to get it done. After that, we're going to go on to Citadel Shade Drakenhof Nightshade. Now I'm going to use this on the optics for the rifle. It gives me a good start point. Uh, I try and drag it to the lower part so I can see what shadows on light I need to work on with the other colours. The next colour we'll be using is Citadel Layer Alt Golf Guard Blue. Let's get back to them trousers that we started. With this now I place upon the trousers using a larger brush. Once applied, 
the original contrast dark areas do show through the opaqueness of this color, so it's quite a good choice. As you can see, those shadows now are still there. For my next phase, I'm going to be using Citadel Layer Dawnstone. I wanted to go back in and darken down some of the recesses of where we applied the Basilicanum Grey to the webbing section earlier. This is actually a good choice. Upon starting that, I found it also worked well for the undershirt. That was by mistake, having just transitioned slightly onto that area. But, seeing that it works well, I went back in and immediately started it around the rest of the model. It gives some nice contrasting shadows, but without being too much. Here we're back to Citadel Shade Drakenhof Nightshade. The blue for the optics, once again, now makes an appearance on the trousers. I place it quite liberally in the area, having watered it down slightly. Uh, I do go back and remove any excess to make sure there's no pooling and no spotting. If you don't do this, you can end up with some nasty stains and some serious dark spots. Now we return to Citadel Shade, Reichland's Flesh Shade. We're back up to the face area near the beard, just reinforcing those shadow areas and adding some depth into the recesses of the beard itself. For our next highlight, we're going to be using Citadel Layer Skaven Blight Dinge. For this, we're going to move around the boots. I try to keep in mind the lighting areas, and having seen it work well there, transition up to other parts of the kit and equipment. These all started out with the same colour scheme. So transitioning around using this as the highlight for this next phase made total sense. There's so much equipment on this model, you kind of have to do it in a certain pattern. I started at the feet, worked my way up the model fully to the helmet, before moving out to the rifle area. It would be easy to forget or miss certain areas if you didn't have a method of approach. Now we pick up Citadel Shade Norm Oil. Having done so much of the lightning and transitions of the shadows here, I wanted to re-establish the real depth in the dark areas. The Known Oil did this for me perfectly. You can see me just scrolling around the bottom edges and the under shadows just to reinforce those black lines and dark areas. On the rifle I tap the magazine area and some of the lower extremities of it to give it some shadow in comparison to the lighter greys we'd established before. Not finished, we now pick up Citadel Layer Storm Vermin Fur. This is definitely different to how I normally approach doing my rifles and the metalwork of most of my guns. It's a much more subtle approach to adding these highlights. Again, having found it worked there, there were certain aspects of the kit and equipment that would catch more light. So I went back in and touched up these areas, especially on the shoulder straps and around the rim of the helmet. Not forgetting those boots, which normally happens, I go back down and just do the top transiting areas where the light would touch the toe caps and around the top. Looking around the model I can see some areas that would catch a similar light source, so I'll go back in and just edge highlight those areas. Really pleased with the results. Now we go back to the face with Citadel Layer Kislev Flesh, and those hands as well. In retrospect, I think I would have used it on a smaller area. I started off with the knuckles of the hand, which seemed fine. 
Once transitioning up to the face, I blocked out the whole of the nose. I feel here thinking about it now, I should have done the tip of the nose, the cheekbones, and then blended it down with a little bit of water into the lower areas towards the beard. But you live and learn. Our next paint will be Citadel Layer Pallid Witch Flesh. This is one of my off for white favourite colours, and I use it quite often. I started out by using it on the optics. Unfortunately, this is the focus on this area is not great, due to the limiting factors of needing to get in at the correct angle and where my camera sits, so I apologise for that. Moving on to the eyes, I just panel out that section. Here I made a bit of a rookie error. Normally, I then go in with some Crimson Caraberg after, but I forgot this process during this one. But I work on the shape of the eyes, getting them to a small point towards one end with a heavy centre and then a small point towards the nose. With this done, we move on to Citadel Layer Calgar Blue. I wanted to finish out those optics, so just put in a transit colour between the two that we'd established to finish it off. Citadel Shade Null Oil would be where we move next. I used to use the pure blacks like a badden on the eyes, but I've since found that these shades actually work a little better, so now I use Null Oil for whenever I'm doing pupils. With Citadel Shade Right Shade Flesh, I go back in over the Kislev Flesh, shadowing out some of the areas. The lower part, the back of the hand, between the fingers, around the beard line again, the nose, above the eyes this time, where the brim of the helmet would give it some shadow. It's a really good controlling factor. You can thin it down with water, establish it, but you must make sure you don't leave any large spots, as they do stain and can make it look quite poor. By the end of the stage, I feel that the model's actually finished. I was surprised that I didn't need to do as many edge highlights as I thought I was going to. For the base, we return to Citadel Layer Storm Vermin Fur. I'd already hit it up with a black ink at the beginning just to take the edge off so the camera glare wasn't too bad from the white spray. With this now, I transition around what is a low texture, cobbled sort of base. You can see that the paint is quite watery and I'm quite slapdash with it, but keeping it almost over to one side. The next layer of highlight would be Citadel Layer Dawnstone mixed in with that original colour. This was done by eye, it was probably no more than a 50-50. I believe being quite confident here is quite key to getting this done quickly and done right. The brushwork is done in real time. I make a real attempt to avoid the black areas so that we keep the transition between each of the cobbles very clean and very clear. If at any point I touched into these, I would just take a separate brush that had no paint on it and remove it. Whilst doing this, again, the paint is quite thin. You can see the opaqueness towards its edges allows us to get some depth and some perception. Already, you can see that the cobbles themselves seem to be taking more shape. This is because we're not painting out the whole panel. With that layer done, we move into Citadel Layer Dawn Store without any mixing agent. So this is the pure colour. I keep bringing it up and I have now transitioned to a smaller brush. I try and do this layer in the same area of each of the cobblestones from a lighting perspective. This should mean that they're pretty consistent. If I move around the model, I keep the thicker area towards that facing. If you look at it in the image now, you can see there's kind of a general consensus that the light is coming from left to right across the model. To finish off, I got a Citadel Layer Pallid Witch Flesh and mixed that in again 50-50 with my Dawnstone. Now applying this to the model, I am very conscious of keeping it towards one edge. I'm going to roughly just under halfway, maybe a third to a half, 
with it thinning towards its center to give me a good level of lighting. This should dry and give me a real nice cobbled look effect. I think it's key that at this stage you've slowed down. You take your time with it and you concentrate on each of the individual cobblestones. It allows you to get that lighting just where you need it and should be a nice finishing piece to a model that already had a textured base. It's really nice to have a textured base to work with. It kind of takes some of the pressure off. I did think about putting some tufts and such on this, but the texture's all there, the cobbles are all there, and I would just be adding it for adding's sake. It wouldn't make sense from the scenery that's actually on the base. I would have had to have gone further and given reason why a big tuft was growing through the cobblestones. So I left it as was and finished out there. I really enjoyed painting this miniature. It's one I actually printed at home, so it was from an STL file. Obviously being part of the team, there was some pressure to get this one right. I believe going down the military contractor route due to the cigar being smoked while toting around a sniper rifle was the right choice to make. I look forward to doing more modern miniatures in this vein in the future. Thanks for joining me today for this episode. If you want to see more of the team's content, why not like, subscribe and hit that bell. As for me, I guess it's time to grab a fresh cup of tea. But more importantly, keep painting those minis guys and we'll see you in the next one.